Welcome back to How To Craft Fair. This is episode number 13 in the How To Become A Craft Fair Vendor series, and we're continuing the last episode's conversation of booth configuration and design. So last week was a more general look at this topic, and if you wanna watch that video and you missed it, I'll put the link right up here for you so you can check that out. But uh, today we're gonna to be pretty much covering essentially a similar topic, but we're gonna go into much, much greater detail in this episode. So the first thing that I'm gonna show you is a program that I used to use as a craft fair organizer. And typically this program is used by organizers to map entire events. So it'll show like the entire you know layout of a craft fair. But the nice thing about this program is that you can zoom way in and basically get to the level of one booth and then start to design a booth if you'd like. So it's a program that's typically used by organizers, but vendors should be aware of it too, because it's a great tool. Um, it's free to use in, in a pretty limited capacity. You know, like you can do like some certain things I'll show you, but, um, Again, it's a great tool to kind of start mapping out different layouts and then figuring out what's going to work with your items that you sell. You know, maybe you have racks instead of tables and things like that. So um, this is a really nice way to kind of do it digitally without having to invest in tables and racks and all sorts of stuff right off the bat. You can kind of map it out first. So. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, so this website is called Social Tables, and they do have a free plan available, and all you need really is an email address to sign up, and you get basically limited access to a whole host and boatload of features. Even as an event organizer, which, you know, the layouts start to get fairly complicated. I was able to do everything that I wanted to. So if you're a vendor, you shouldn't have any problems at all. So the first thing that you're going to do is, you know, register, log in, and then it's going to ask you to create an event because remember, this is pretty much geared towards organizers, but um, I'll show you how to use this as a vendor. So you're going to create an event and just give it a name. Okay. So I just named this one designing a craft fair booth, and it'll ask you to put a date in because it's going to eventually have a list of events that you've done. And for this purpose, the event date doesn't really matter. And, uh, okay. So we're going to go ahead and dive into this now. It's going to ask you for a diagram. Okay. And the diagram is the hall layout okay so we don't have a hall so we're not going to worry about that so we're just going to go into this blank layout okay so now it's going to take you into this page here where it basically looks like a hall okay so we have like a big rectangle here and let's just pretend that is our facility okay so now we need to actually put a booth in here someplace that we can start designing so the first thing that we're going to do is click on this little chair over here that represents objects and then we're going to click on trade show and what's gonna come up then is booth. So we need to click on that. And then our default size already is 10 by 10. So that's great. So if we hover your mouse over here, it's gonna to want to drop a booth in somewhere in the facility. So let's just put it right in the middle. Okay, great. Now that is our booth right there. And uh, we can zoom in now so we can get real tight in on this booth so we can start designing it a little bit. All right, and then for this example, let's just assume that you are in the middle of a row, okay? So there's other booths on the side of you and the foot traffic is up over here. So we can even kind of like label this with this text button. And once we click that, we can just tap on the map right here and then we can just type in whatever we want. So we'll just say that this is an aisle for shoppers, okay? So that we can keep in mind that this is the front of the booth. All right. So we know that this is a 10 by 10 area. Okay, so now it gets interesting because we basically can start making decisions on how we want to fill this booth out and the way that the flow is gonna work and all that. So we go back to this chair icon and if we click on tables and seating, it's gonna start to suggest some different tables. So if we click on rectangle, um, we can put in, let's see, let's go with a different size. Let's go with, let's go with six feet by 30 inches. So that is a pretty standard craft fair table size, uh, six feet long 
and then 30 inches wide, so two and a half feet wide. And to get rid of these chairs here, all you have to do is click on this edit button where it says chair, and then click on this, you put your zeros in so that there's no chairs on any sides, and then we can collapse that, and then now we just have the table, okay? So uh, let's put the table just like right here for now, just so we can place it down, and then we're going to make this a different color so it stands out. So let's make the table green. And if we use this, we can rotate it. So this actually gets to be pretty cool because now you have a six foot table that you can start to place in different parts of the booth and you can start to fill out what you're imagining for your space. So let's say you have a table that's like right up on the front part of your booth right there. But then now let's say towards the back of the table or I'm sorry towards the back of the booth you want like a little pay table okay where just a little like bar top table or something like that where you can process your payments and bag up uh, items for shoppers well then you would just go back to the chair okay that we were at before and then um, you can use like this high boy right and that's like a that's almost like a bar top table right and it's 30 inches in diameter so you could kind of put it maybe like here and give that a different color maybe blue all right and then now maybe you're standing in this area back here and this is where you can be doing like your transactions and things like that or if you want to you know kind of push it a little bit for, further into the corner so you can stand here but this is kind of what i'm talking about is you can really start to build out whatever you want with this program and you can manipulate the sizes of things and there's different objects that you can put into your booth and this is a really great tool to actually start to create a vision for your booth with, without having to literally go to you know go and commit to buying tables and stuff like that and then decide that oh, okay well i i wish i would have been able to picture this before i committed to buying all this stuff for the booth and now i don't like you know the layout so again this is just like a nice fun thing that you can use and the thing is is like it's extremely versatile too so you have to basically have a layout ready to go for your booth in a whole bunch of different situations. So in this particular situation, we basically, we basically said that this is just one aisle and it's just, you know, a front facing booth. But what if you were a corner booth and what if you had an aisle here as well? And it's like two sided. Well then how, how would it look different? How would you build the booth booth out differently? Um, so again, keep all the different situations in mind when you're starting to design your booth because you need to have a game plan ready for all different types of situations. And a lot of vendors will ask me, we actually, in fact, I just had a recent video, a recent booth review on this particular subject where a vendor was expanding their booth from a 10 by 10 to a 20 by 10. And then it becomes a lot trickier on, okay, now I know I want more space, but how do I fill it out, you know, without it becoming cluttered and, and things like that. So, um, again, this is a really, really great tool. So the website is called social tables. Uh, you can get an account for free and, uh, start playing with it right away. So I encourage you all to check it out. I'm not an affiliate for social tables, so it's I don't get a commission for them or anything, but uh, <laughs> it's just a good recommendation of something that I used to use, and um, I really enjoyed using it. So really quick, I just want to take a minute to show you one of the layouts that I made for uh, one of my events as an organizer, just to kind of show you how far you can take this program. Like I said, if you are a vendor who is considering organizing events, a lot of times this is how organizers come to be is, you know, they, they were once vendors or still are. But anyways, 
like I said, uh, this website is really great and it's very, very powerful how far you can build out your layouts and how detailed you can make them. So I kind of just wanted to uh, show you really quick kind of like how far you can take this and how detailed you can make it. So, all right, so let's get back to these tips on how to build out your booth. Okay, so like I said, that was Social Tables and that's a website that I prefer, but there are others that are out there for editing a booth, okay? So if you're a vendor that's already using one of these programs and it's not Social Tables, drop it in the comments below so that we can kind of talk about it. And then that way it'll give vendors other options to pick from if for some reason they're not into Social Tables. Um, also, if this method of being on the computer and doing this online is a little bit too intense for you, or maybe you're not computer savvy, you can always revert to an old school method of using graph paper. So if you have a 10 by 10 booth, you could just mark off 10 squares down and then 10 squares across, and then start to fill that in with tables of your choosing. So a lot of common table sizes are four, six, Four, four feet, six feet, and eight feet. And then typically they're 30 inches wide, so that'd be like two and a half blocks. Now it's not gonna be as precise as doing this online, but it'll at least give you some kind, some kind of an idea of how to put your layout together without having to go out and buy all these things and then find out that you don't like it anyways. So. Again, keep that in mind, and I hope that helps with at least establishing your layout and configuration. Okay, so now we're gonna start to talk about displays and signage. And displays and signage that you have at your booth should basically inform the shopper of all necessary information that you wanna to convey to them as efficiently as possible. And it should also do it in a manner that's complementing the feel of your items and then the overall theme of your booth. You basically only have a couple of seconds to make a good impression on a shopper and displays and signage go a long way in drawing people in so that they can get a better feel of your items. So let's start to break this into sections. Now this is gonna be quite an undertaking, but we'll kind of take it piece by piece and break it down in parts. Now the first thing that we're going to talk about is signage. Now there's a whole bunch of different types of signage and I'm going to break this down into the types of signage that you should consider having at your booth and the types of signage that you pretty much need to have at your booth. And the first need is marketing. Now you want to have your presence as a business and brand established at your booth. This can be done using banners, signs, Sometimes people use QR codes that'll link to your social media pages. Um, also signage that uh, would take people to your website, okay? And you should also have an email signup sheet at your booth. This is a form of marketing that you shouldn't take for granted in this day of age. And I know that it might seem a little bit old school, but it's actually becoming more and more important as time goes on because algorithms are getting hard to battle and sometimes your posts will be trending and then sometimes they'll be seen by nobody at all. Whereas with email marketing, whatever your contact list is, that's going to be the amount of people that receive your email. So building an email signup list is really important at your booth. Now, if you decide to have an email signup sheet at your booth, you need to have a disclosure at the top of the form that tells the person who's signing up why and how you're gonna email them. Okay, so that's very important. Um, you know, potentially you can get into a little bit of hot water if you don't have a disclosure on your email signup form because it can be considered spamming. And when you start sending out emails to like hundreds or even thousands of people, um, you don't wanna be basically considered a mass spammer and have your account reported and stuff like that. So um, a disclosure can be really simple. So an example of it is you could say something like once a month, I'll send out a newsletter from a business and I'll let you know where I'm going to be at or maybe offer up some coupons on a show. But basically you're stating how often you're going to email them and then the purpose of your emails. Okay. And then that way, when people give their email address from you, you basically have their consent to email them in the way that you've described on that form. Okay, then other forms of marketing at your booth can be something as simple as having your logo stamped, uh, either stamped or 
applied to your shopping bags with a sticker. So I've seen people go either way with this and it's just kind of personal preference whether you get a custom stamp made or you just have a whole big roll of stickers made and then you slap those onto your shopping bags. But this can be a nice little subtle way of marketing your business and it's also nice to do because when you start making sales at a craft fair and people are walking around the event with your bags that have your logo on them, it's basically like free advertising walking around during the show. So that's also definitely something to consider. Okay, and then business cards should also play a role at your booth. I would suggest having business cards out at the booth. And also when you make a sale, I would throw a couple of them in the bag as well, just for those chances of getting maybe some repeat shoppers down the road, or else you can also have your social media handles on your business card so that maybe your shoppers will follow you on social media after the show. So again, that's just another, another form of marketing that you can have at your booth. Okay. And then finally, the last bit of marketing signage that you can have at your booth is an about the maker sign. So a lot of artists and makers are starting to do this now where they'll have like a little sign and it has a couple of sentences and it basically gives a little bit of a backstory on their inspiration for creating the works that are presented in that booth. So it's kind of cool. Like if you think about it this way, a lot of shoppers are going to craft fairs for the experience. I mean, they get to meet the makers, you know what I mean? They they don't want to have a department store experience where you have no idea who made the items and things like that. And there's no backstory. There's no connection. So, uh, like I said, treat your booth like it isn't a department store. You know what I mean? So, um, create it into a more personable and approachable environment and make it special, you know, give people a reason to kind of connect with you and connect with the items that you're presenting. Okay, so another sign that you should have somewhere at your booth is a payment options sign. So do you accept cash? Do you accept cards? Do you accept virtual payment apps? And then also on this sign, you can cover things like, do you accept refunds or are all sales final? things like that. So this is kind of like a two for one sign. A lot of times you'll see it combined on a one sign, but um, yeah, this is definitely something that you should have at your booth. And nowadays, a lot of people are doing QR codes for payments. So, you know, you can have a QR code that pe takes people directly to a payment screen. And then that way you can do touchless transactions and there's no card or no cash exchanged and all that stuff. So something to consider, and you could probably have this all on one sign. All right, now if you're a vendor who offers customization, it's a good idea to have a sign that tells people that. Now, when it comes to customization, a lot of times it can get fairly complicated pretty quickly. So there's a lot of like options for people to, you know, choices for people to make basically. When it comes to your customization offering sign, it should be very basic and stripped down. Just say, I do custom orders at the show or ask me about customization. Something simple like that because you don't want to have a sign that's like five paragraphs long with all the rules and stipulations and options of the customization. I mean, people are just going to their eyes are just going to go right past that. You know what I mean? So keep it really simple. Just tell people that you offer customization and then at your booth have a form that dives into like all the details that people can pick from. This is actually going to be an episode later in the how to become a craft fair vendor series is custom orders at your booth. So stay tuned for that. But for now, let's just keep it simple and talk about the sign. And when it comes to the sign itself, also keep that simple too. Okay, so another thing that you can consider doing at your booth, and it's kind of fun, you know, but um, it's basically having some sort of sign that says, um, I welcome photos, tag me. And people will have like a hashtag, like something really specific to that business. And if people want to take like a picture at your booth, or maybe they bought something and you can kind of take a picture of them or whatever. Um, having a sign that like encourages photos can be kind of cool because again, you can attach like a hashtag to it and it can get a little bit of traction on social media sometimes, especially at these like high profile events where there's a lot of people and a lot of foot traffic. So not all vendors are 
comfortable with photos at their booth and that's 100 understandable so that's fine if you aren't comfortable with that but if you're looking to kind of spice things up a bit and have something different or exciting at your booth this is one thing that you can do to kind of like spark a conversation and have like an experience at your booth okay now finally let's talk about pricing signage so this is something that i talk about a lot <laughs> during the craft fair booth reviews but it's something that you have to assess at every booth you know and um, it's a basic thing and it's sometimes overlooked so you want to go two different routes with your pricing you can either price every item individually and have a tag on every item or you can do grouped pricing where you have similar items grouped together and presented together at your booth and then you just have one sign for all of those items in that group now if you go with individual pricing what a lot of people will do is have a barcode on their tag and then that way when they're doing checkouts it's easy to track inventory of what's sold at the show and then how much stock you need to build back up after the event now with the grouped pricing a lot of times you'll see people just use like a little chalk sign and then they'll just have you know one for 15 or two for 25 or whatever the deal is you know what i mean and with the chalk sign it's kind of nice because you can just change that and alter that as time goes on and you know whatever is needed to change you can you can do that with that sign what I have seen people do and I would recommend doing is using two to three different colors on your pricing signage if you're gonna use a group sign. So for example, you can have like one color chalk for the name of the item. So say it's gonna be like a candle, you could have candles in one color and then you could have the price like in a different color and maybe there's different sizes of candles okay so you'd have like a small medium or large or something like that those would be different colors as well because the reason why you want to do this is if everything is one color and you stand back it kind of like all blends together and nothing really stands out there's no definition but if you utilize different colors and you take a couple of steps back it becomes a lot more clear on like those stipulations of the prices you know so a small is this price a medium is this price and a large is a different price and it just looks a lot cleaner and clearer and then don't forget to have like a spare sign handy at your booth maybe you just put it like in your tote like your supply tote and um have a sign on hand just in case if you're doing any kind of like special deals during this event so maybe it's like the biggest craft fair of the year and for this one event you do like 10% off of orders that are $50 or more or something like that. Like just have a spare sign that's handy that you can toss out at your booth if there's any kind of like deals going on, um, things like that, you know? So just, just have that handy in case you need it. Okay, now for this next segment, I'm gonna recommend a few signs in particular that would be great to use at your booth. Two of them are gonna be chalkboard signs, okay? And when it comes to a chalkboard sign, you want to season the chalkboard sign. And what in the world does season a sign mean? If you aren't familiar with it, basically a chalkboard, if you write on it immediately, like the first time you use it, and then you go to wipe it, that writing is gonna be like stained on there like forever. So what you wanna do when you first get a chalkboard sign is to take your chalk and cover the entire sign like really heavy, give it a nice coat one, one time and then wipe off the entire sign, okay? And that's basically gonna give it like a coating of chalk so that when you go to write on it, and you clean it off, like that initial writing isn't gonna stay on there forever, okay? So that's called seasoning a sign. So uh, something <laughs> something I really didn't know about until, you know, somewhat recently, and um, it was a pretty cool tip, you know? So just kind of passing it along to you guys. But um, the first sign I wanna recommend is a tabletop self-standing chalkboard sign. So it's about the size of a sheet of paper, okay? So it's a decent size, and there are different colored chalks that come with it okay so um really cool very cool sign and it's nice that it's self-standing so you can really put it anywhere at your booth and then now the second one i want to recommend is a pack of 20 small chalkboard signs the sign is only about four inches by three inches so it's smaller than an index card but bigger than a credit card okay so it's kind of in between that size and this is a nice size where you can kind of like just tuck it into areas where there's, um, you know, different uh, 
different items grouped together at your booth that happen to be different prices okay so that is also a nice item to have is these smaller signs and then finally i want to recommend a light box and light boxes are a lot of fun because first of all you can fully customize it to say whatever you want it to say so this particular one comes with 400 different letters and emojis so you can kind of give it like some flair and personality and that way it's something fun to have at your booth it's a little bit different you know not everybody has these and it just gives a little bit of personality at the booth while also conveying something so um you know again maybe you have like a nice sale at this particular event or you want to uh advertise your bundle pricing on this light box sign or some people just use it for the name of their business too so that's kind of cool you can use it as a marketing sign so there's a lot of different purposes for it and it's nice that it lights up too so if it's like a little bit dim or maybe it's a dark day and you're outside um it can be something that draws people into your booth as well. So again, you know, probably a pretty good return on investment on a light box. I'd recommend, you know, vendors to have this on hand for many, many different purposes. All right, now for the rest of the video, we're gonna do pretty much rapid fire tips that should take your booth to the next level as far as your signage and displays. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is colors, contrast, and texture. Now, if you've watched my booth review videos, you've heard me talk about this quite a bit, but, it doesn't hurt to keep it at the forefront of your mind. So as far as colors, you can have exciting colors at your booth, but what I would recommend doing is having like some sort of neutral color to kind of establish a foundation and familiarity. And then if you have an exciting color, pick just one, okay? Don't have like 40 different exciting colors at your booth because it's gonna be really hard to just have like a grounded identity. So. As far as colors goes, I would play it safe, you know, play it neutral and let your items kind of do the talking as far as colors. Um, you don't have to go too crazy. You can have an accent color. Um, and what I would recommend is weaving it into your marketing. So if you have a business logo, tie it into your business logo and really start to establish a theme throughout the entire booth. Now, when it comes to patterns and texture, you want to try to limit these as much as possible. Um, if you insist on having some kind of a pattern or, or texture at your booth maybe like um at your tables or around your tables maybe stick to just like a runner or something like small and subtle because it doesn't take much to overpower your items and you never want your displays and your signage or even the textures that you're using at your booth to overpower your items okay so basically your booth presentation should elevate your uh, your items not deviate them and not distract people away from them okay and then you want to keep contrast at the forefront of your mind as well so basically if you have a lot of dark items you want them displayed against light colored displays or racks or whatever you're using and if you have light colored items then you want dark displays basically you want as much contrast as possible because then you're going to ensure that your items are standing out against whatever they're being displayed against Okay, and another trick that you can use at your booth is to use displays or even signage that actually reflects the shape of your items themselves. They can, this can be kind of like a fun thing to do. And if your signage and your displays have a theme themselves that ties into the theme of your booth, then this really goes a long way to providing an experience for those people. So the first recommendation that I have is a Tumblr display. So um, I have a TikTok friend that makes these uh, Tumblr signs and it's really cool because it's self-standing and it's customizable and it's in the shape of a tumbler. So this is really cool. Um, a lot of people make tumblers and display tumblers at, at your booth, but not a lot of people have a sign like this. So this can be something that can kind of like set you apart from those other people selling tumblers and also give your presentation a little bit more personality than the next person. So Rebecca has an Etsy shop that has not only this Tumblr display, but she has a whole ton of stuff on her Etsy shop. But there's a link below in the video description that'll take you directly to this specific listing. And if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. 
Okay, and some other recommendations that I have are Amazon listings that I found that are really, really fun. So the first is a boat shelf. So if you have some sort of like an outdoorsy theme, this is really, really cool. I mean, these have a ton of personality. Um, they're very, very stable too because they have like the nice big flat bottom. So if you put them on a tabletop, they're not gonna fall over or anything like that. So again, this is a really, really cool item where it has like a fun identity and it's a great way to display your items. All right, the next thing that we should consider for displays is shapes, okay? So sometimes shapes can be really interesting and eye-catching at a booth. So I found this item, this is a hexagonal shelf and it's not that big, okay? So this would be great for something that's kind of smaller, but at least it gives you an idea, you know? So um, if you like the look of this and you know, you think that it might work with your items, give this a shot or, you know, start surfing around and find one that you like, but hexagonal displays are becoming kind of like a trendy thing. So consider this for your booth as well. Okay, and then finally, you can't go wrong with cute and cozy and homey. So for that, I would recommend wood crates. And this particular set of wood crates has a couple of different sizes, so that's always cool. And um, like I said, they're kind of like a classic look, but they also have a lot of personality and coziness and warmth. So sometimes booths can look a little bit sterile and you know they're almost like too clean. And you know I always recommend people to have a clean booth and a tidy booth and things like that, but you also have to make sure that it has some kind of personality. So something as simple as wood crates can, again, really go a long way in helping with that personality and helping to make the displays interesting. Okay, now for a handful of random tips on displays and signage for your displays you never want to overstock your displays if you bring a bunch of backup inventory for a product that's already displayed out at your booth and the design is no different from what's already being displayed don't put a whole bunch of the same like items out there there's really no sense to it okay people um, they don't want to see 40 of the exact same things on a rack and it just makes it kind of look cluttered and um, it's just not clean, you know, and like you want your space to breathe and you want to give each of your items like a chance to shine. So when there's like 40 of the same things on a rack, it just it's it's really overkill. So if you have access inventory for duplicate items, keep those stowed away for when you need them. Okay, and then if possible, display how your, how your product should be used or applied by the shopper. Now, this can be something as simple as having a mannequin at your booth that, you know, maybe it's wearing a hat or it has a scarf, or it can be something as extensive as filming a video and then having that on repeat on a tablet at your booth just to display and show to shoppers how a particular item should be used. So some items are a little bit more complicated than others and having like an informational video can really go a long way at your booth. Okay, and another thing to consider is the use of props to further enhance the experience and theme of your booth. Now, you never wanna go seriously overboard with these, but it can be nice to give a little extra flavor and touch in your booth. So some examples could be the use of tasteful lighting. Uh, maybe you have like some rustic or repurposed items that could be used as displays. Um, I've even seen people use like garland that looks like a vine or like eucalyptus garlands. And this can, again, just give like a subtle taste, a subtle flair to your booth that, you know, just kind of gives it that hominess and that experience that you're trying to provide to people. So if it happens to work with your particular theme and what you sell and what you display, also, this could be something to consider. Okay, and finally, do not underestimate the effect of a clean, tidy, and accessible booth. Presenting things in a clean manner that puts the focus on your items is key, okay? So your booth should look good, but at the end of the day, you're showcasing your items. So ensure that the items themselves are attractive. Don't skimp on the packaging and labels. So sometimes like the packaging and labels on items can really go a long way. It helps to establish your brand, it establishes credibility of those items, and it shows people that you took time not only on the item itself, but even how you are handling the items with the packaging and the labels. So this really can make a good impression on the shoppers. And then lastly, always be sure that your booth itself is 
tidy and easy to navigate and free from any hazards. Uh, make sure that there's no tripping hazards, nothing sticking out from underneath those tables. Make sure the tablecloths aren't rolled up on the ground so that people can catch their foot and trip on them. Um, people who have the outdoor booths, when you use your tent weights, make sure that you're using proper tent weights because they're designed to be basically minimalistic and hug the the pull, okay, of the canopy. And, you know, you don't want to be using like cinder blocks or like things that can kind of stick out and get in the way and create a tripping hazard. So all these little subtle things, okay, add up to making a good impression. Your displays, make sure your displays are secure, especially tall displays that have a chance of tipping over. Just make sure that your booth is easily accessible and people can get in there check your stuff out and be in there in a safe environment because the last thing that you want to be doing is worrying about some kind of an insurance claim because somebody fell in your booth and maybe you had something that was, you know, a little bit sketchy and things like that. So you don't want to be worrying with and worrying about any of that. So do yourself a favor and just kind of keep things clean, tidy and orderly. And not only will it help the appearance you know, it'll draw people in because it'll be a clean environment, but it'll just look better too. It'll look more presentable. And again, the focus will be on the items and not the environment. Okay. So this was a lot, I know, but thank you for sticking with me. And I hope that these tips will help you at your next craft fair. This again was episode number 13 in the How to Become a Craft Fair Vendor series. And if you want to check out all the other videos in the series, click on this playlist above. And thank you all so much for watching. Please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing.